Macros are nothing new to Bitwig Studio, but the location has changed, as has the functionality. You could actually argue that now in version 2, the macros uh, play a slightly bigger role or are capable of playing a bigger role. Now, normally we would find the macros here at sort of the top level of the device, but macros have been replaced with remote controls. And just as a reminder here, remote controls can only go to one destination and the range is going to be the entire range of that control. I can't limit it. So here with shape, you can hear, maybe here on the far left, it doesn't sound particularly good, or like with sync going all the way to the top, it kind of sounds a little bit out of control there, at least for the sound I'm going for in this example. That's kind of a cool sound, but it may not fit with like a, a low bass. Um, with macros, we'd be able to kind of set it up so that it wouldn't go that full range, especially if we had like a MIDI controller, like one of those continuous knobs, you could get into trouble with hitting the top pretty quick. And in this case, it wouldn't sound all that nice. But never fear, we still have access to our macros only now they are going to be found in the little modulation slot area here. And I can bring them up. We have two options, the macro four and the macro one, macro one, one knob, macro four, four knobs and we'll look at both of these in a couple different examples so here i've brought in the macro four we have the option to go bipolar for something that is bipolar like shape or pitch it would make sense to maybe use that if we want to be able to go both directions or we can set it to just like unipolar so that it's just going to go up depending on the range that we set we can change the name of these and that's going to be something useful you cannot change the name from within here so let's say that this is going to be our shape sync so we'll just title that appropriately this is our shape sync. And what I'm going to have this do is it's going to control a little bit of the shape. And I only want it going this direction. And then a little bit of the sync. Now, one nice thing is that I could actually set this up from the uh, remote control level. All right. I could go in. I could get rid of these. I could set this up. And I could actually do it from in here if I wanted to. So either way, it's going to give you the same result. And now as I play my note. I can turn that like so, and I get the kind of range that I would want. I don't want more, I don't necessarily want less, and that's really the beauty of these different macro controls. And that's really all there is to it. So you can set these up anywhere you want. It's gonna work the same if you're on you know, an audio track, as long as there's a device in there, um, or if you're working with a note input. One other nice function of the uh, macros here is that you can use them to control other modulators even if it's within the same device so we don't have to worry about you know stacking this so I could go in here and I could take an LFO and one thing that I would probably use a macro to control a lot would be the depth of this so let's say for example that I want to have the pulse width changing and we'll just set this up with these default settings here so we can go quick all right I could set some range here might even have a little bit more something that we can really hear I'm trying to get something that's going to sound good now I'm going to take this out of bipolar mode nice so I kind of like that one thing I may consider doing is taking my macro to control the depth alright I do something like that so now when we go in take things that one extra step further which I think is really cool and really nice and so in the next example I'm going to show you how um, using the macros can be incredibly useful if you have like a much more complex instrument like a uh, third-party plugin as well, as well as additional effects with many synthesizers and other multi-effect plugins you often find that you have macro controls set up right inside of the instrument 
And so this would be a great time for us to use macros to kind of create a transitioning sound. So to take something that's more of a pad and then convert it into something that's different, but at the same time is still kind of similar to what you had before. And then this is very useful for, you know, working with a sound going from like an A to a B section. You can do the same thing with a button and that's more of like a toggle. So if you wanted something really extreme, you could do that. But in this case, we're going to set something up that's a little bit more subtle. And what I'd probably do with these macros so I don't have to keep opening up the instrument as I would use the remote controls here and just go ahead and set these up quickly. Nice. And then we can go right ahead and we can bring in our macro and we'll just use one in this example. And I'll go and I'll just start by like changing these parameters here. And when you're actually doing it, you're obviously going to go in and like really listen and pay attention. But for now, I'm just kind of doing this at random. And this is already going to make a big difference to the sound. So here is the uh, before or the A. And then we can bring this in and we'll change the name of this and just call it like B synth. Probably that lo-fi setting is too high. And in this case, this would actually almost just work as something that would be fun to like modulate. So you could set up an LFO and have that modulate this. I'll let you do that on your own. Just know that it is completely possible. The other thing I would probably do in this example would be to go in and like bring the sustain levels down. Uh, let me just make sure I select the control. There we go. So I'll bring the sustain level down. Then I might even go and like increase the decay level just a little bit. And we could do the same thing for the other envelope. change the octave and then just to take this one step further we will go in and like add some other sort of a plug in here let's see if we have that tall chorus in here that would be a nice one to throw on uh, where are you there it is and right now when this is sitting and existing outside of the instrument it's not going to be able to like modulate this, but the great thing is I can always just go and I can bring this inside like this. And so the only thing we'll probably have controlled is the dry wet. So I'll bring this back, have that dry wet selected, and then bring some of that in here. <laughs> And then one other thing I'm just going to do from the beginning is bring this volume way down because that's causing some issues. And so you actually hear how at the end the sound is now like much quieter. One useful thing is to go in and just like throw a tool device on here and you can kind of compensate for gain. You could also use like a compressor or something after the fact, but uh, what I'll do is I'll just set it up this way. And so we'll bring in a little bit of amplitude as this goes up. And again, that was too much. <laughs> Maybe like four is about the range I need. So as we're transitioning into our B section, this would be maybe like a cool thing to do and slowly have it come up. So here's our starting point. And then as I go over to the uh, B section, 